So now let's take a look at modeling something in a freeform environment. So I'm going to go up here and I want to tell it I want to create a freeform. It's going to give me a warning message that I'm entering the freeform environment. That's okay. So now I can pick from a primitive here. In my case here, I actually think I'd like to try a quad ball. I'm going to end up modeling a bench that's kind of has spheres on either end and a bridge in between. So I'm going to go ahead and go with the quad ball. And it's going to ask me what plane I want to sketch mine on. So I'll go ahead and pick this plane right here. It's going to ask for a diameter. And let's use 30 inches. And I'm going to use the two spanning faces and everything else looks pretty good there. So I'll go ahead and say OK to that. The first thing is I don't want this centered on the origin. So I'm going to go ahead and move it uh, around a little bit here. So I'm going to go to my edit form. I'll double click so I can pick the entire sphere. And I want to move it this direction, 30 inches. And I also want to move it up 10.23. So now I have that kind of sitting in space where I want it. Now let's think about how a bench would work. A bench would work with a flat bottom here. So if I pick these four faces, I have a command called flatten that will try to take all those vertices and flatten them out to either some sort of fit or I can say a plane uh, parallel to a plane that I pick. And I want to have them flatten out to the bottom. Now, because it's a T-spline, it's not nice and smooth around the bottom. But what I can do is I can pick these edges, and I can crease them. So under Modify, I can go to Crease, and it's going to make a nice sharp edge at that spot. Okay. So now, let's say I want to start building my bench. So I'm going to use symmetry to create the other side, and then we'll be able to build just really one half, and it'll build both halves. So I'm going to go to Mirror Duplicate. I'm going to pick this object, and it's going to say, what plane do you want to mirror it around? And I'll actually use this one right here. You can see it shoots another one over there. They're exact opposites. I'll say OK. And so there we go. Now they're going to be symmetrical. So if I do one to one thing, it's going to do the same thing to the other. So let's start building the bridge between the two. So I'm going to grab these two faces. I'm going to go to my edit form. And typically with edit form, if I just grab the edge, it's going to just move it. But if, if I hold down alt when I drag, it's going to add additional faces. So you can see here as I pull this one, it added an additional face on the other side too. I have a blue that I've selected and because of the symmetry it's highlighting these in a yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and hold down Alt again, drag in, do that one more time. Now if these are going to match I want these to be laying a little bit more flat. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and I can flatten those or what I could do is if I go back into edit form I can use this scalar manipulator here to scale to a zero factor, which typically flattens objects out. So now I actually want to remove those two faces, and I'll build a bridge between the two using the bridge command. So to build the bridge, I'm going to go up here to modify, I'll go to bridge. It wants me to pick the side, so I typically just double click on one loop or one edge and it'll pick the entire loop. Orbit around the other side, tell it I want to pick side two. Double click on that, so now it's ready to go. I can tell if I want any twists and how many faces I want it to build in between. I typically try to keep this an even number, that way I have my faces symmetrical around my symmetry line. So I'll say OK. And there we go. And now that I have a line that is real symmetry, you can see I have it lit up in green. So now I'd like to refine my shape just a little bit more. So I'm going to go to Edit Form. I'm going to pick this vertex right here. And I'm going to just bring this down and try to level out or even out that top surface of, of this, which is going to be a bench at some point. So I'll go ahead and say OK to that. 
And let's say I want to add maybe an armrest and a back to this. So I can, I can add additional edges here that will allow me to subdivide these. The first thing before I do that, I actually want to remove my symmetry. So I'm going to tell it to clear symmetry, pick this object, say OK, and now my symmetry is gone. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to use a command called insert edge that will allow me to grab multiple edges. And I can use this grip to slide them to either side. And the, the value here is a percentage of the distance of face. So what I'll do here is I'll use negative 0.5, say OK, and now I've subdivided those. I'm also going to repeat that now on the for the armrest. So I'll say insert edge. Pick this edge and this edge. And there we go, there's our edges. So now that I have this, I can grab these faces. And I can use edit form, hold down alt, drag up. Now I start getting my, my back and armrests. Say OK. And there we go. So I'm going to finish my form. One thing I want to point out here is that this is actually a solid object. If I actually do a quick section analysis and pick one of my origin planes, you'll see this is actually completely solid, which realistically, I don't know that I would actually have this thing out of one solid chunk of anything. So what we can do is we can actually use a tool to hollow this out. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up here to modify and use the shell command. The shell command wants me to identify maybe a couple faces I want to remove. And then I can tell how much of a wall thickness I want to leave. And let's say we want to leave a quarter. We'll say OK. And now if we orbit around, we can look. We can look and see it's hollow inside based off the shape that we've created. Just like with the bus stop shelter, what I can do is I can modify the appearance and make this something interesting. Actually, if we wanted to do something like a wood, we could even make it look like it's made out of wood. Actually, I'll probably just use another common paint color just to make things look um, pretty common so I'll go to maybe metal flake I can tell it I want to download this uh, paint metal flake red and apply it to my bench 